it's like a weird Tara deception. I'm gonna do it right now. Tara-ception. Okay, guys, you know what that means if we're live. It means it's time to dance. Um, Phil, Greg, my son wrote the theme song and we always start by dancing to it. So okay. put on your dancing shoes. <laughs> and Let's go, Philly. I know you got some moves. I've seen you at parties. Yeah, yeah. I, I do all my dancing from the chest down, unfortunately. <laughs> you got to make it work. You made my place. <laughs> Come on, Greg. Some good car dancing going on. Yes, Baldwin. Yes. Well, he's a musical theater guy. He's brilliant. Oh, what a beautiful morning. I hope everyone's dancing. Make the camera do the work. Isn't that isn't that good? He's such a he's such a good. Um, hi guys. Okay, I'm going on to the live so that I can try and see um, um, com comments and things too. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our live Jashi episode. Um, of course, we are going to explore Samurai Jack. And we are so, so, so lucky to have the man, the legend himself, Mr. Philomar. I thought you were going to say me. No, you're not, even, you're not even, you're barely here today. We got I mean, a lot of legends well, here. He <laughs> on a deuce fast even, I'm even sharper than I'm usually, which is hard oh, to believe. Wow, can you imagine that? Um, and we also have Mr. Greg Baldwin. Hello, my friends. Oh, I greet you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's so nice to see your faces. I miss you in person so much. Um, we're going to start with Phil because you've played this role for so, so, so long. Would you mind telling <laughs> the world how you got this part about the audition process, the history of you becoming this iconic character? Um, wow. Let's see. I just finished Mad TV back in 99. 1999, for anybody who's unsure. I mean, I wasn't born yet, but thanks for the info. No, 99. <laughs> That's right. Well, that, that was 89 Canadian. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and it was really interesting because I hadn't done a lot of animation by that point. I think we had started Futurama and I'm trying to remember and the static static shock over a kid's wb and then this audition for a new cartoon network show showed up and had no idea what it was for and i just auditioned the one thing i remember is gendy tartakovsky the creator was there and he explained the background of the characters from ancient japan and He's just kept saying less because it was like a lot of action. It's like, yeah, nope. He doesn't. It doesn't take him that much effort. I'm like, okay. So everything became more and more pulled back. And I remember we were working on it, and we s narrowed it down to this voice. A, you know, a little bit of the Japanese accent because he wasn't speaking English. He was speaking Japanese. So there really w didn't need to be any accent. But you know, the way the show was. Gendy wanted to have a flavor of Japan, so we did a little bit, and basically we wound up with what we called like a young Asian Clint Eastwood. <laughs> wow, I That's never cool. heard that before. That's cool. Give us a little more of it, bro. Say, say like, uh, say something for us. Well, you know, Greg, the interesting thing about Samurai Jack is I do not speak very much. Most of the words were said by. Mako playing Aku. I mean, it's interesting because like when the show, the first season of the show or the first four seasons, that whole narration was done by Mako. 
Wow. That's beautiful. I love that voice, bro. I don't care I, what Tara says. Wait, about, wait I, I, I will bet a million <laughs> dollars he's like never even about. seen an episode. Have you, Greg? Me? Yeah. I, you know, me and Phil, we, we hang out all the time. I see uh, him in... As, have, you know, wait, um, have you? And every time Greg and I hang out, I make him watch one episode of one of my shows. So <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> wait, Greg, do you know who I play on the show? You're not in the show, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Greg okay. and I, we're, we're only on season three, so he hasn't gotten to you yet. Tara. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Um, Are you really in the show, T? I'm not yes. doubting you because you're in every freaking it's show. Literally, here. the name of this episode is Joshi. You're Joshi. Samurai Joshy? Jack. He's Jack, and I'm Ashi. Wow! I thought I was your only, I I was your only ship. <laughs> no, you didn't. We've done 10 episodes with me with other ships. What are you talking about? Ship, what are you talking about? Oh, my God. I mean, I want Greg's job. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't do any prep. He never knows. He just shows up. He's adorable. Thanks. No, that's, it's like, it's like the Greg Ferguson of the show. I, <laughs> Listen, you could be way, David Letterman. Did, by the way, I did a tremendous amount of prep today. Oh, you did? I, 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 I dry brushed my whole body for 15 <laughs> minutes. Uh-huh, okay. I uh, gargled with uh, coconut water, coconut oil. I took a, a CBD uh, saltwater bath. I bet you did. That we can <laughs> tell. That we can tell. So does that mean you're going to get naked later, Greg? <laughs> I'm already there, bro. Later? What do you mean later? <laughs> you know how hard it is for him to keep his clothes on right now? <laughs> Any, anytime I'm around Tara, I just want to get naked. The truth comes out now. That's the truth. There you go, world. That's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> um, okay, anyways, yes, I play Ashi, which is um, a love interest to Jack, which we'll get into um, all the shipping and amazing cosplay and art. And, oh, my God, the fans were so devastated when Ashi died. I don't know about you guys, but do you get, like, tweets every day saying, can you tell the producers to rewrite the ending? Do you guys see this all the time? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and it's so sweet. It's so sweet. They're so passionate about it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I I love that. I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, once when the show initially, the fifth season aired, it got a lot of that. And I kept telling people, it's like, not every story has a happy ending. <laughs> you know, that's right. like somebody, I'm writing a letter to this Shakespeare guy. Why are you going to kill Hamlet? I love Hamlet. <laughs> Everyone right. dies. Jeez. Right. Can I ask before, um, before our season, who did they ship Jack with? Who was like the big canon samurai jack ship or was there one there wasn't oh interesting because you know one the show started you know pre-internet fandom and two there was i mean there was the, the closest thing jack in the early seasons got to you know a little bit of love interest was with aku yes they, they, they there's a love hate relationship there it's a very oh, strong relationship yeah. but I no no that. no greg there's one episode where aku takes on female form and there and they spend the, the episode going around with jack as like you know and then you realize at the end he goes back to aku forms like oh wow that could have got real awkward <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Great play well okay okay before we get into that um since you don't know and we know you don't know the original aku Quiet. The original Aku <laughs> was the brilliant Academy-nominated actor Mako, who was oh. uh, legacy and brilliant. And um, I just want to introduce Greg with this story, and that is that he passed. And um, Greg is brilliant um, and took over and really honored the essence of this character. He, unlike Greg, did research and watched and embodied um, this character. And <laughs> Mako's daughter came to watch us record. Um, which must have been hard for her to see a role that her dad made so famous. And she wanted to see, and she got teary when she heard you, Greg. You did yeah. such a great job, and she really gave you a lot of love for your uh, version. So you're you're quite the quite the star, my man. Well, you know, I mean, it, it really what I what I kept thinking about that day. First of all, I was freaked out that I was. It's one thing just to do the voice of an iconic actor or an iconic character, but this was this woman's father. So I was freaking out. I was like, well, Gendy, I wish maybe you'd give me a heads up before the, you know, record. It would have been nice, but hey. But at the end of it, when, when she was so, so nice to me and clearly it, it meant so much to her, I, you know, I just took it into my back to myself. And I thought, oh, my gosh, how much I would love even to hear an imperfect 
approximation of my father's voice again. What I wouldn't give to hear that. Mm. And it's like, wow, that of all the things that I've ever done in my life professionally, I think that was probably the coolest and most amazing thing, certainly the most satisfying thing. It was a beautiful it's moment. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm glad probably. I got to witness that. Yeah, and, really and cool. remember, Tara, she she had brought her son, Mako's grandson, right, right. named Mako. Named Mako. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I'm getting all kinds of. I know. Deals. I saw that when I was when I was signing into Cartoon Network that day. Uh, uh, I, I saw written about uh, someone had written Mako. <laughs> and I remember thinking, that is a sick joke. What is up with that? You know, oh, okay, fine. It was such a sign. He was with you. Such a <laughs> sign. <gasps> I love that so much. And actually, um, the season that we did was so well received. Um, uh, what theater was it at, you guys? There was a big premiere. The Ace. Downtown, uh, the Ace uh, was downtown. Downtown. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was so gorgeous. I miss going to fun big parties and premieres. And the entire uh, theater was packed for this premiere just you couldn't get in you couldn't get in for this is this the kind of thing phil um you know for years and years and we feel the same way fans were on your side fans have been asking for season six of teen titans like all the time and we feel the same way were you getting similar requests to do more jack well yeah well but also remember the gap between season four and season five was like what 13 years. That's a while. Right. So, but the weird thing was because the show ended without any real explanation. Like it wasn't like we came to a conclusion or they, they announced that it wasn't happening. And actually, Greg, you may not even know this story. Um, why the original se series of Samurai Jack ended. It's George Lucas's fault. I, I don't know why. Oh my God, we get this story? We get this story right now? Because we were doing Samurai Jack and it was, you know, on Cartoon Network, it was doing really well it's to the point where um, somebody, uh, Brett Ratner, the movie producer, hired Gendy to write a treatment for a live action Samurai Jack, which would have been a really ridiculous, dumb idea. That would but, be cool. But people were, were really, you know, acknowledging what a great job, what an amazing show Gendy was creating. One of those people was George Lucas. And he came to Cartoon Network and said, hey, I want to do the first animated Star Wars, but I want the guy who does Samurai Jack to do it. So they pulled Gendy off of Samurai Jack to do the Clone Wars micro series, these little five minute Star Wars cartoons that basically to me breathed life back into Star Wars. Because it was, um. was post Phantom Menace and Gendy just like, I would, you watch those things and it, you react the way you watch the original Star Wars. Like, oh my God, that's so cool. What kind of world is this? I want to know more about it. But it meant that we got off track with Samurai Jack. And then, and Cartoon Network was going through all sorts of crazy madness. Like they were, they almost stopped calling it Cartoon Network because they wanted to go into live action. Oh, I remember this. I remember this. Yeah. They had, the, like, they had a couple of live action shows. Mm -hmm. But basically they just said, ah, forget it. And then they just didn't bring back Samurai Jack, you know? Cause that's, you know, it's funny cause nowadays, what, 15, 20 years later, we, we understand how important this is, but the executives at the time, it was just one more cartoon. It was Ed, Ed and Eddie, Samurai Jack, blah, 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 whatever. Wow, you know? yeah. Well, we certainly saw by the fans that showed up and then, of course, online and all the love we got for that season, which was a it was a work of art. I mean, oh, yeah. absolutely, just beautiful. And, and watching it like, you know, you're in something great um, animated wise when you can really lose yourself in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that season was that for sure. Oh, yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about our romance, Philly Phil. In Which wasn't life. a romance in the beginning. No, it wasn't. You and six of your damn sisters tried to kill my ass. I mean, I did try to kill you, which I think, I think it's kind of like kids in kindergarten, but to the extreme. Um, yeah, I was not into it at first. And it was like the coolest love story. And also like, <laughs> there was so much cool, like, um, like spirituality to story? it. And what's that? 
You said the coolest love story. Our story is the coolest love story. I I know. I forgot you were here. Um, Phil, like the um, <laughs> like it was so <laughs> deep spiritually and meaningful and it was very rewarding and those sessions were awesome and like very real gut-wrenching we were crying or doing whatever in these you were absolutely brilliant i was very honored to be your love by your side you really were well the funny thing is i mean i don't know about you but it wasn't like we got all the scripts ahead of time right right i didn't know where i didn't know where this was going but i have to say this to all the fans and to you guys, Gregs, and you know, Tara and I have been working together a long time, you know, since she was this high. <laughs> um, but I definitely remember sitting in those sessions and thinking, oh my God, bitch, I've seen you for 20 years. I didn't know you could do this. <laughs> you were doing, you were, you were going to places and cre creating stuff that, I mean, I was already impressed. I was like, oh my God, that was amazing. Aww. The queen. Thanks, Philly. So yeah, touched. Queen. Touching episode. It's already so touching. Uh. Oh my God. And you too, Greg. It was so fun to watch you. I mean, Aku, what a fun character. Um, maybe talk a little bit about when you first got that role and, and how you prepared for it. It's a, it's a huge, huge role and some big, crazy shoes to fill. Well, I mean... <clears throat> This, the, the reason I ended up re replacing a lot of doing a lot of Marco's work all goes back to I've told the story a lot as a, if you've heard it before, but it's a true story. I owe it all to Stephen Sondheim because he wrote a what? musical. I know it's weird, but I love <laughs> the fact that, that life is so weird and I'm 60 now. So you can clearly I can clearly see the thread of things in my life. My parents, I loved musicals when I was a kid. Absolutely loved musicals. My parents for birthday, Christmas, whatever, all I wanted was original cast albums. 1977, my 17th birthday, I get an album called Pacific Overtures. It's a musical by Stephen Sondheim. It stars an actor named Mako, who's up for a Tony Award. This musical blows my mind because it's not about boy meet girl and girl loses boy lot. It's about America screwing over Japan in 1850 and what wow. happens as a result of that. And it's all done kabuki style. Anyway, it just it just blew my my computer. Wow. Mm. Loved it. I could sing the entire score for you right now, which is what I used to do. I used to sing along with the record. <gasps> so in 2006, when Mako passes away, I had been essentially doing an impression of Mako for 30 years. Holy Just crap. by singing along with the album. And and I love, I love, you know, it's such a cool story because I think, well, what if my parents hadn't given me that album? You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here now, probably. Wow. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's kind of cool, you know. Well, they yeah, give you, you know, Sweeney Todd instead. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> it's a good thing your parents were making burgers out of people. That is amazing. Um, by the way, the fans want to hear you sing a little of it. Pacific Overtures. <clears throat> In the middle of the world we float, in the middle of the sea. The realities remain remote, in the middle of the sea. Kings are burning somewhere, wheels are turning somewhere. Trains are being run, wars are being won, things are being done. Somewhere out there, not here. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I could do more than that. Marco. It's that was such, what a cool story. And it is true as you get older and you look back at all the puzzle pieces that made your life. And some yeah. of them weren't such pretty pieces, but they had to go in to get to this piece. And fascinating. And sometimes they're so, I mean, you would never think something is something like a birthday, one birthday present would have had right. that one much birthday of an effect. Present. But it did. It was huge. Yeah, I have a question for you since mm -hmm. what's the lot in the lineage of energy that? help to make your character that you play in the show like what's the connection from your life that you've brought to this character like that is there a story um, like um you know if i if i had to say today how i relate to her it could be um maybe she sees herself one way for a long time and then she sees herself another um that could be part of my journey with ashi uh She's such a cool character, Greg. You should really watch the last season. It, well, I mean, you should watch all of them, but the season that we're all in together, it's a beautiful work of art. Oh, absolutely. Let's have a sleepover yeah. party and watch them all. We'll watch well, it all on Zoom. It's too. funny, because I credit a lot of 
I mean, to me, the core of Samurai Jack is the visual storytelling, without a doubt. You know, the the colors, the sound, you know, everything. But I give a lot of credit to that fifth season, the power there, to you, Greg, and your performance. Oh. Because not only, you know, were you just, you weren't just doing a Mako impression. You took on the character. I mean, you know, I, I was joking about Hamlet before. It was like, you watch Olivier do Hamlet as a kid, when you get cast as Hamlet, you're not just up there playing, you know, imitating, you're playing the character. And it's funny because when they announced that the season was coming back, that the show was coming back, I auditioned for Aku. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Because, I mean, I thought, well, Would have been kind I, worked, of I worked alongside Mako for four years, and I had actually doubled for him in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, um, wow. movie that, that, you know, I guess they were doing stuff and while he was sick. And, you know, I had listened to Marco for many years. And, I mean, thank God I, they, some, somebody thought, wow, that would be a really bad idea. Um, <laughs> because cool you're, I would have been doing an impression, but you just played the character and brought life to the character and helped them take that character to different places and new levels that, to me, helped make that, that fifth season just so, so powerful. Wow. That plus, you know... This whole thing of, you know, I kill six of your sisters and then we fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It was such an incredible storyline and it was so cool. And every moment, every single moment is is brilliant. And um, Baldwin, he's right. He's really right. And we've all seen uh, actors take over animated legacy characters. We won't name names, but some people just sound enough like them and don't embody them and then there are those that embody and you really did and that's why his daughter <laughs> <laughs> no, they are as i as i always say you know i i can never really fill his shoes but it has been a great honor to try to fill his shoes well yeah. um, everyone I mean, was, agrees you the, did the thing, I, and i know you know again when i, I look forward to meeting him someday not anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We'll, we'll we'll play up in the cartoon hangout in the sky. Um, okay, so now we have a little more shipping question for you guys. Have you met fans at cons dressed as your characters? Um, do you have any fun? Like we fell in love in Samurai Jack, or we had a Samurai Jack wedding, and um, any fun con stories with uh, cosplay from your characters? I think at the LA convention, I think it's the only time I ever saw it. And it was quite an impressive Aku costume. Right. I think they were on stilts or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a hard costume. To, I've seen to some off. really amazing ones. Do a little uh, Google search. They're pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, I, thought, I, I cosplay Iroh, but it's like Aku, I literally could never cosplay yeah. because there's simply no. <laughs> I'm kind of fat and old like Iroh, but I'm, you know, <laughs> nothing, I'm nothing like Aku. So that would be kind of a hard one to pull off. Definitely. Bill, yeah. you've seen some good Jack. Didn't we see? We saw we saw a few with Ashi with the sisters. We saw that together. Right. Remember? We were like, oh, look over there. Yeah, there was one con where all three of us were there, and there was an, Ak an Aku. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the picture guy, right? of you guys kissing, and I'm behind, and you can see the big Aku behind. Mm -hmm. and yes. Yeah. The picture of real us kissing. Right. It was a cartoon um, kiss. It was a cartoon kiss. What about art online? Have you seen things that are inspiring to you or that sticks out to you? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean that's the thing. Again, the show is so so powerful visually that it inspires you know a lot of great great artwork. Um, and I mean, not all of it is great, and it's <laughs> it's especially tough you know when you have such a high bar. You know, I mean, a lot of it looks like stuff I would do if I tried to draw it. Like, yeah, OK, <laughs> thank you for loving it. <laughs> I'm always so impressed with the artists. I can't draw anything. So anything sounds good to me. Um, Greg has this game he likes to play. And I just I let him do it because otherwise he'd have nothing to say ever. So <laughs> I've got a lot to today's episode. I really feel also that we should have more really talented Greg's on, because every time you're giving Greg praise, I felt like you're giving me praise. <laughs> did you, by the way, I just want to know, did you remember that we were doing a show today? 
I told you I've been prepping all day. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, somebody yeah, mentioned your Ashi cosplay. Oh, oh yes, I did Ashi. Should I show everybody? Yeah, show us your Ashi. Okay, I'm gonna show you. I did Ashi. Was I at New York Comic Con? I think it was New York Comic Con. I can't remember where it was. I think it was so. Ooh. Whoa. Right? And Ooh la la. Ooh. Damn. That's like Girl. my natural hair color too, so it was really fun to just go back to that for a minute. That's fun. That's fun. I love I love cosplay too. I think it's speaking of cosplay, we have a little surprise for everybody. Let's bring on our cosplay. I didn't answer my I didn't ask my question. Okay, but you can ask it? everybody. You can ask everybody. Okay. Let's bring in the goddesses. Come goddesses, come show the world. Back. Bring Here in the goddess. <laughs> now it's a samurai jack party. Hi, ladies. Uh, hello. <gasps> Thank hello. you guys so much for joining us. We were hey. just talking about cosplay, so what a great time to bring you in. So I'm going to go around the screen of my Zoom and introduce you and tell and um, if you could let everybody know where they could find you on social media. I'll do that with the actors, too. I like to do that. But I'm going to start with Ms. Burns. Can you please tell everybody where to find you? Oh, we have no sound, Ms. Buns. My bad, sorry. <laughs> um, on Instagram, I'm official CC Buns, and on Twitter, I'm CC Buns Castle. I love that, CC Buns. Thanks for showing up today. JoJo, you. you're up next. Hey, everyone. I'm Carmilla Joe. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, online um i'm on instagram known as circus of miss joe i'm also on very active on tiktok as carmilla joe and i have an official website at carmillajoe.com and i also run a cosplay podcast called carmilla joe's cosplay corner so no way yeah awesome. we'll have to check that out thanks me Delta major amazing amazing okay jess you're next <laughs> hi my name is Jess or Jaywa Designs. You can find me on <laughs> Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Twitch. I like to live stream uh, creating my cosplays. Nice. You look amazing, by the way. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Um, Phil, Phil, Phil where, where can everybody find you on social? Um, Phil Lamar. Two L's in the middle, two R's on the end. Uh, <laughs> on Instagram and uh, Twitter. And uh, occasionally I'm actually on there myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay, Mr. Baldwin, tell everybody where to find you. I'm, uh, I, I'm ordinarily on, on most of the socials, you can find me as, as Greg Baldwin Iro, unless I'm in Twitter jail, which has happened on occasion to me. Ooh. Really? <laughs> these are, you know, recently. You, these what'd are, you go to you know, jail for? What'd you go to jail for? political stuff it, it was some comments i made on january 6th got it uh, got that it. is all i will say got uh, it got uh, it so i had to spend but yeah greg bald and i wrote and then i'm just now my kids are trying to explain tiktok to me oh. so you know hopefully eventually i'll figure it out you know you, know, you never know you could blow up on tiktok <laughs> um we lost we lost one cosplayer hopefully she'll come back because she's a super goddess phil if you're just asking about her um <laughs> So the thing that I love about our cosplayers today is like you guys had no idea when you woke up this morning that you were going to ashi up and get in front of Phil Lamar and Greg Baldwin. Did you? It was a nice morning wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You know, very oh, surprise. <laughs> it's like you wake up and what am I going to do today? Oh, I'm going to dress as ashi and meet the stars of the show. So and you guys we... made all those costumes in the last couple of hours? <laughs> wow. I wish. Holy, holy <laughs> yes. that's <laughs> Oh my God. I, I, or is that just a Snapchat filter? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, thank Snapchat. you guys so much for coming on last minute. It was just so fun to just be like, oh, let's bring some cosplayers and surprise everybody. Sarah um, finds the, cool, the best cosplayers. I love getting the I, DMs from her. She's like, check out this cosplayer, check out this cosplayer, check out this cosplayer. And then we have them on the show. It's so rad. It's so fun. It's so fun. Um, Ms. Buns, tell us what got you into Samurai Jack and if you have any questions for Phil or Greg. Oh God. Uh, so I was, uh, when I was prepping, I was thinking a lot of actually what Samurai Jack meant to me. And it actually reminded me, uh, it's one of the few shows with my dad when I was younger. I was really into anime and stuff and he never really got it. And when I sat down, that would be the only thing he'd be into. He'd just be like, oh, is that that Samurai show? Okay, I can sit here. Okay, I like this. Mm -hmm. So um, Phil, you're actually one of my biggest 
dumb. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, basically part of my uh, childhood and then also you too Greg because uh, Avatar is one of my favorite shows as well and I watch that yearly so you both mean a lot and I'm really honored to be here so thank you and you too Tara please you're like my entire childhood I think you're everyone's childhood Aww, you're so sweet <laughs> I very, very sweet of you sis. oh yeah sorry also Greg <laughs> Peace Boy was my baby crush so <laughs> baby crush when she was a baby when she was a baby not when she was I got other ships too yo <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. Um, how about... I got other shit. You shit me. Why don't... Okay, go back to whatever right. you were doing. What were you doing? Driving for ice cream or something? Where were you? Like, why are you in a minivan no, right I just, now? I just drank three green juices. Is this, are, is this your mom's <laughs> minivan? <laughs> well, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to take a bathroom break. Is what you're saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> I just don't. I just don't even understand. Joe, tell us what got you into um, Samurai Jack, and if you have any questions, comments for our amazing stars. Oh goodness. Well, um, so I remember 2001 very, very clearly. I was, um, I was very, very young at that age and I loved Cartoon Network. And I remember um, seeing the first commercial for Samurai Jack on Cartoon Network. And I was like, is that Professor Utonium? <laughs> and, and then I saw Samurai Jack and I was like, oh, this looks like a really good show. I'll have to check it out. And so I remember watching it with my parents and um, I just completely like, as a little kid, fell in love with the whole series. I love the art, the story, the characters. Um, Jack was, um, <laughs> he was my uh, cartoon crush growing up and like a big role model for me um even to this day like this show has a huge creative influence on me and um samurai jack like as a role model to me like he's he's um kind he's resilient he's um he's res he's determined responsible doesn't uh, back down from challenges and like to me like um, I really strive to um, have those qualities um, in my life as a person. And so to me, like this show just means so much to me. And I feel like it's I've grown up with it. And um, everyone, like my family, my friends, my boyfriend, they all know I'm just this <laughs> one girl who will not shut up about Samurai Jack. <laughs> and um and so I love this show. It really means a lot to me. And I'm not done cosplaying from the series. Oh, nice. uh, see, you you were the to me, the audience member that the season five was because I was used to joke with um, Gendy that that fifth season was basically what the show would have evolved into had it kept going for the 14 years in between, because that fifth season was not the same as it was when you were growing up. No, it wasn't. Oh, it, was it was darker, you know, and sexier. And, you know, I mean, that whole, the Tom Kenny thing. Where the guy... <laughs> oh, my God. Scaramouche. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the season. And I also do play the video game. I completed, oh, I had completed all the um, Master Samurai levels. And I'm currently working my way through Master of Masters. <laughs> Isn't it a cool game? I love the game. Oh That's my god. Game. It translated the show so well to video game format and I am in love with how immersive the video game is and how well everything translated from screen to this immersive gaming experience. So I'm very, very happy with the video game. And I'm like, please make more video games. <laughs> and plus Ashi's there. So that's that's a that's a Yes, bonus. Ashi, yes. Jess, you're so gorgeous. Please take off your mask so we can see oh, your face. Oh my gosh. And tell us how how this show has inspired you and anything you'd like to say to our Wait, this cast. You are human? I, I mean I'm technically in a human suit, but <laughs> I just look like it. No, I, I love Samurai Jack. I was about 12 or 13 when it came out and my little brother and I watched it so much and so when I got the message this morning and I was like wait a second is this for real am I gonna be I'm, I'm gonna meet Phil. I'm gonna meet like Phil Lamar and Tara and Greg oh my gosh I told my family and they're freaking out because I introduced the show to my nieces and nephews and 
they're they, they're just freaking out right now too i sent them a link and hopefully they're watching <laughs> <laughs> hi J- hi jess's family hi, hi. <laughs> Hey. Um, oh. thank, you, thank you guys so much for coming on last minute too. Like it was like hours ago. Hey, you guys want to suit up today? Yeah, we'll come. <laughs> like- amazing, amazing. Um, okay, Greg, do you want to ask now? Yeah. Okay. Ship, okay. marry, kill someone from the show. But you know what? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say the show is not the biggest cast, so it can be <laughs> any. It can be any character from Samurai Jack with a character from Samurai Jack or another show. I'm going to give people that option. Ship, I'll let, marry, I'll let you, ship, marry, marry kill. kill. Well, that's pretty easy. The game me. creator, I'll let you uh, add that to it. You're not the game creator. You were the game stealer <laughs> from the producer. Um, okay. <laughs> Phil, you want to go first? Um. <laughs> ship, ship, Wait. marry, kill. I just picked three random... As As Jack... Or oh, as, should we make yeah. it as Jack? We should make it as Jack, right? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, you as Jack, it is actually very simple. <laughs> Ship, Ashi. Mary, Ashi. Mm-hmm. Hill, Aku! Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah! Oh, <laughs> see, that made the whole show. Now, aren't you glad we invited him on, Greg Sipes? Aren't yeah, and aren't you glad you use my, <laughs> use my question every show to cap off uh, these? I know. I mean, what would the show be without that question? <laughs> um. All right, Greg Baldwin, your turn. Well, I think okay. Obviously, somewhat similar. Ship Aku would ship Aku. <laughs> Mary Aku <laughs> kill the samurai. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and actually, that makes a lot of sense because he's a shapeshifter, so he can ship himself. <laughs> oh, that pretty <laughs> well. I never thought about that. That's no. Now everyone's gonna draw that. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no rule thirty-four. <laughs> now, now, our cosplay girls, our cosplay okay. goddesses. Same question for you all. I think I was waiting on this. Um, me personally. Uh, I would probably say ship uh, Ashi's mom. Don't judge me. Wow. Uh, Mary. Well, Ashi's dead, so samurai. <laughs> uh, um, and then probably a coup. Kill a coup. Sounds fun. <laughs> Everyone wants you gone. Sorry, Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Baldwin. Yeah, let me think. Um, ship. Oh, this is going to be really random, but the Scotsman. He was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, like, I love to say that. Oh, yeah. uh, he's great. Um, <laughs> That's gonna be a, a, a night of a, a fun time. Uh, no. yeah. <laughs> Mary, hmm, I, I would say Sarai, and then of course we have to kill a coup. I'm sorry. <laughs> wants wow. to Everybody wants to kill you. Um, even me, even Phil. Uh, wait, we missed Joe. Joe. Yeah, ship, so for kill. me, um, ship, this is a cannon ship, the Scotsman and his wife, they are way too cute. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mary, um, obviously I would want to marry Jack and kill, um, I would kill Scaramouche, because, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, he already died in the series, but he was he just, he, he was a fun character to kill off. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said they didn't want to kill you, Baldwin, aren't you happy? Ah, oh, excellent. You know. <laughs> I mean, I love Aku. <laughs> you see, I'm not so sure Aku is really dead. Because you know That's what? That little thing. ladybug at the very end that he sees, the very, very end, that ladybug is red and black. Just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. I, no, yeah, I think we're meant to wonder. We're, we're having a little trouble. Looks like we're trying to... Delta, did you get back with us? Can you hear us? I see her. Uh, yes, I'm here. Hey. One I mean, moment. We have to show off this cosplay for Baldwin or else he'll get oh, sad. Touch. That... No, it's like, yes, can Aku be killed? <laughs> or can he just be trapped in, uh, you know, a stump? You know, a stump. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the echo was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, that, or was that just of... me? No, it, it was, no, that, it that was, was, that was Aku. Delta. 
Like, and you never know. I never who's, know. Like, who coming to get you? <laughs> With that CBD, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a second, please. I'm okay, just no trying to mute your phone. No, no worries. Yeah. We're here. We're here whenever, whenever we have, we have one more cosplayer that's having a little technical difficulties. But How rad is this that we're live too. today, by the way? Should we, we show live? Maybe are our live. Second it's the closest thing we can get to going live at Comic-Cons, which is sad that we don't get to do that. Oh, it is sad. Um, have you guys cosplayed these? You have at cons. It's on all of your Instagrams. You've all cosplayed these characters yes. at Comic-Cons. Yes. So I fun. I sadly only did a cosplay test <laughs> but oh you just did a test okay mm -hmm. um and did, did anybody else get it like this stuff on because we're talking about the internet stuff i remember when the show was airing one of the things that just made me giggle so much was watching so many young people who were had grown up binging every episode of everything having to wait Wait Seven a week. Seven whole <laughs> days for each episode. Yep. And after every episode, people would try to guess the entire rest. I'm like, y'all, 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 relax. <laughs> Just go live your life for six days and then wait for the next part. <laughs> I, I personally like waiting a week. Uh, okay. I'm back, you guys. Okay, okay. Delta. Delta. Watch Hi, everyone. Hello. Of course, with the live show, we have technical difficulties. But hi, everyone. I'm but Delta Major. I am a fashion Ooh. and costume designer. And what I do is cost fashion. So I, it's like Met Gala meets Comic Con. So I turn Aku, horns and all, into <laughs> basically a Met Gala style dress. Because always a villain, never a hero. <laughs> You look hot. This, so <laughs> how how long did this take you? Uh, I did this for Anime NYC, what, 2018? I kind of made it like a week before con. So like seven days constructing and everything. These, this is all EVA foam. Uh, oh, a week. Did she say a fake. week? Did she mm -hmm. say a week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, to me, the, it seems like the, you know, the, the making of it would be challenging. But storing that thing must be a huge challenge. Like, where the hell you got that? So these kind of fold in like a dead spider, and then oh. the dress, can, the dress kind of gets folded into itself, like because this is like kind of motionless because it's all like um, interfacing to uh -huh. keep the structure. It was even worse walking through Con because it was just like <laughs> my own little like three foot bubble exactly. So everyone was getting hit with these. Luckily, it's foam and not wood. Oh. So that was it's that perfect, was fun. It's the perfect COVID costume. Keep it, just gives, it is. Yeah, it like, is. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> keep your keep your distance. <laughs> or I'll I throw you that. into a portal. <laughs> I love that so much, Delta. We didn't get to ask you this earlier um, about what Samurai Jack means to you and what inspired you to make this costume. Oh well, one love the graphics, the illustration, amazing. It was one of the first cartoons that didn't do the black outline, which I like, loved and was stunned by. Mm -hmm. um, also, the lack of speaking, it was just, it was very like visually entertaining, especially for kids, and the color contrast and just everything was amazing. And just like, who doesn't love time travel? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Black people right. don't. <laughs> Right. Like, Don't send me back to the 1800s. Hell no. Oh, no right. <laughs> fair. Fair. We don't, of course. We like we live in a perfect time as people of color. Yes. But if we could and things weren't such crap, then of course time travel. You know, just to tweak a little things. Some things prevent certain things from happening. Maybe or you know take down the Dark Lord Aku. <laughs> yeah. Again, see. Sorry, Baldwin. Everyone just wants to no. Know. And he's so I, I, I understand your mission. It's almost like Thanos. He like he wasn't wrong, but he wasn't right. So <laughs> Delta, you answered one of the you answered one of the questions. Ship, who would you ship? Who would you marry? You just said who you'd kill. No, I, I wouldn't. Who who would I kill? You have to answer who you'd ship and who you'd marry it to. Who would I ship? Okay, I ship the Scotsman. <laughs> yeah. and, and that little orangutan thing that was following Jack around <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about y'all know if you, if you know you know <laughs> <laughs> so that's my ship who would I marry um 
that's an interesting question. Those robots that was in that like funky town that had the music, those are my posse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see us having a whole like sister robot wife kind of thing. <laughs> wow. I don't think anyone's ever said that on an episode that they want sister wives robot. Yes. People. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that future could, episode that, was fun. You know what? That could be a reality show. Yeah. My robot Let's do sister it. wives. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. On Bravo. I see everyone watch it. It's entertaining. <laughs> I um, wouldn't necessarily kill Aku. Thank you. Wouldn't necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. Mm. Got it. Um, okay, now now um we're gonna ask, we're gonna start with Phil. Um, and you guys think about this too with your ship. Where are you taking me on our date? You can go anywhere. What's that? Where are you taking Ashi on this date? You can go anywhere. Well, I would like to take you back, back to the past. But this time, don't freaking disappear. Mm, mm, mm. I want you to meet my mother. Oh. So we, we would need to get, uh, you know, a time paradox loophole or something. <laughs> like you do. That's that's where you're taking me on a date? On a time paradox loophole? No, I'm taking you yeah, to we... ancient Japan. I have this great palace that I grew up in. Uh... Now you're talking. Now you're die, talking. Samurai, die! Oh Go to the Disneyland! Just kidding. That sounds like a great date. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. Greg, uh, where are you taking your ship on a date? Where well, my ship is Aku. <laughs> <laughs> where am I taking myself? I'm going to the pit of hate because those disembowelments always make me misty. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 See that? That's I don't want to go on that date, but oh, uh, no, that's, that's I, awkward. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. <laughs> Buns, Buns, where are you taking your date? Um, so I feel like just traveling the world with Ashi, just getting in a flight, just going because she, she didn't really have much to explore. So she didn't. Seeing her and now seeing her see the ocean, sand, maybe ski see, a little. That's so much more romantic than a time travel date. Yeah. I don't know. Walk the time looker from one sounds kind of cool. <laughs> 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 Joe, where are you taking your date? Um, Remember that Jack had a motorcycle for the first two episodes of season five? He needs Bill's to take naughty. me on a motorcycle date. I like it. <laughs> I think that I might mean, be true. When that so motorcycle... you'll have to wait for me to grow my beard back out. <laughs> yes. Just, I mean, when that motorcycle was destroyed in the second episode, I was like, R.I.P. motorcycle. I think <laughs> Phil needs to improv a little bit of that date. <laughs> yes. Well, I got this motorcycle uh, as sort of a compensation thing. You know how men uh, get <laughs> cars. I lost my sword, so I got a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, now, man. baby, I have both. Wow. I want to go it. for a ride? Ooh. See what you, see what you did, Joe? Yeah. See what you did, Joe? I love it. I love it. <laughs> she's, going, she's going. She's going. She's going on the date. Jess, mm-hmm. what's the date look like? Oh, so I shipped the Scotsman, right? <laughs> well, I did think about Denny's. Um, maybe Olive Garden. I would think he would enjoy those two places a lot. I mean, you know, it's a Scotsman. Oh, yes, the Scotsman wants something with a bottomless pit. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Endless pancakes, you know. The haggis. Go for Endless the haggis. Pa- oh. mm-hmm. it's, it's an IHOP date. I like that. Okay. <laughs> um, Delta. My date with the, my robot sister wives. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best answer of all time. Yes, Delta, your date with your robot sister wives. What are y'all doing? So we're wreaking havoc. We're going clubbing in the electro clubs, you know. N-tuka, n-tuka. <laughs> we're going to do some of that and uh, steal one of those holograph, uh, those like hover taxis and like cruise the town. Yeah. I, I think I choose that date. Greg, you get to choose. I think I'm hanging with Delta and the robots. I get to choose? Well, which one would you go on if you could? 
Oh, I like to ride on uh, Phil's joy, joy bike, joy bike, joy ride. I want to get on. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I asked Greg to speak. Um, you guys, <laughs> this has been so much fun. Um, and before I let everyone go, I want you to have a minute to promote anything that's coming up. Tell everybody again where they can find you, any charities that you um, are real fond of right now. And I'm going to let you go first, Phil. Um. Well, like I said before, I'm at Phil Lamar, um, basically my name, on Twitter and Instagram, and um, don't really have anything specific that's coming out that I can talk about yet, because, you know, apparently animation is now like working at the dang Pentagon, because they won't <laughs> let you say nothing about nothing. Um, spill the beans, Phil, spill the beans. Spill the beans. <laughs> Come on, man. No way, man. Disney <laughs> have like one of them red dots on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> what about your show that you were working on? Yes, we are still. Um, uh, I was I'm working on a show called Goblins based on a um, web comic. And that the, that's at goblinscomic.org. And it's, it's amazing. It's a Dungeons and Dragons type story. But it's the premise is, what if the monsters... You know, what do the monsters think about these, you know, these games where humans go around and just cut their heads off all the time? Our story is a bunch of goblins who decide, why don't we become a party of adventurers? And um, my friend Matt King and I were developing that, and hopefully we'll be able to turn it into a cartoon. I love that. In the not-too-distant future. Phil, that sounds awesome. I want to be a goblin, bro. You know, I mm. knew the only reason he spoke is because he wanted to make sure he was cast in it. Of course. No, I want, to, I want to work with Phil. And I, I want to be know. a goblin. Everybody wants to work with Phil. <laughs> Seriously. By the way, like, um, what? Uh, Luke, is this is our super chat available now? Because it'd be cool to raise funds for uh, compassion for animals. What's what's the name of the charity we're going to promote? Mercy today? for Team Animals. Mercy, for, Mercy animals. for Animals. But it's not up. I don't think it's up right now. But it is like one of my favorite charities in the whole world. Um, Phil, I'm um, sorry. So, um, can you say again where they can find goblins? Is it still something people can kickstart and, and contribute to, or is it just something people can watch out for at this point? Um, at this point, it's just something to watch out for. Um, okay. cause we, we, uh, you know, uh, crowdfunded, um, some, uh, tr for a trailer that we're still piecing together. We've got some great people involved with that. And, uh, that's at goblinsanimated.com. You can go find out about that. Well, you let us know anytime you want to come on and promote anything. I am so behind anything you're doing. Phil, you are such a brilliant light in this business. You are a super talent. You are the most versatile, and you're such a mensch, and you're, um, you really are just a giant in this industry, and um, I'm so grateful to call you, friend. Thank you for being with us today. We have so much fun at Con. Yeah, anytime, anytime you want to come on. Um, Greg Baldwin, tell everyone Hello. where they can find you and if there's anything you'd like to promote. Oh, Now's Greg Baldwin chance. Iro. You know, if if indeed I'm not, you know, in Twitter jail, you can generally find me at Greg Baldwin Iro, mouthing off about things. <laughs> uh, I think I mean I got a I, I'm doing a Disney uh, animated show, but I don't think it comes on until 2022. I do believe it's still about a year away. It's called The Ghost and Molly uh, McGee. Oh, no. wow. Uh, which is kind of cool. I play a ghost magistrate called Bartholomew. Uh, and other than that, you know, I, I, in, in this odd, really weird time, uh, I, I, I really am very grateful for cameos. Mm -hmm. Because it really, a lot of it is so much because people want to talk to Iroh and they want Iroh to tell them <laughs> that it's all going to be okay. Which... By telling people it's all going to be okay and everything's going to be, it <clears throat> sort of helps me feel like it's all going to be okay. Aww, that that being it. said, I also yeah. like it when they call, when they ask for Aku, because instead of, you know, happy birthday, Aku is like, oh, happy birthday. You're one year closer to death. How do yes. you feel about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I enjoy oh, that. Oh, that's really funny. Okay, well, everyone needs to know that. Um, yes. If you want to be yelled at by Aku if you want for to be your birthday, by Aku, please go on to <laughs> Greg Baldwin's no. cameo. You can only drink so much tea. Every now and then, you just want to insult someone. I think Phil, you you're on cameo too. I am. I am. Yeah. yeah. I love that, Greg. So, so you have tea 
and extra thick pizza. Extra <laughs> thick pizza. Extra going back. Yeah. And that's it. It's tea <laughs> and extra thick pizza. That's <laughs> it. You know, what else do I you love, I, I might have to get a message yelling at me from a pizza. That would be fun. <laughs> That'd be fun. Um, Cece, tell everyone, Miss Buns, where they can find you again and anything you want to talk about that's coming up. Um, uh, I'm excited for some of the stuff I'm working up on cosplay, but uh, I still have to finish it. So <laughs> I don't want to announce it yet, but um, I am really excited because this month is Black History Month. And then also a big thing in the cosplay community, if you don't know, is that it's uh, 28 days of cosplay, uh, Black cosplay, sorry. Um, and it's just something I'm really happy about because sometimes the cosplay community, tag them. Sometimes the cosplay community can't always be the nicest and welcoming, and it really hurts my soul to hear that. So these are one of those steps forward that actually can give people who need, you know, the reach and stuff like that, that don't always get shared every day. It's one of those steps closer to, oh, is it just, you know, 28 days of Black cosplay? It slowly becomes, that's just what we do every day. So it's something that I really am happy that people are taking a part of, and I really hope more people do, uh, especially during COVID because everyone got into cosplay. So I really want people to like feel welcomed in cosplay instead of just being like, oh, I can't do this because my skin color. And it's like, no, 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 no. You can do anything you want. Don't worry about it. Just, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're so yeah. adorable. My God, Buns. I'm so happy that I stopped you online this morning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. I love your it's spirit and you look gorgeous and your costume's amazing. And I love everything you said. And that is the beautiful thing about cosplay. Any, anything goes. And curses. Well, that, if and that's needs. actually really interesting, Tara, what she just mentioned about. Because you know, we're all in these fandoms. And it's a weird thing because comics animation you know there's this weird strain of conservatism in fandom you know it's like no that is the thing i watched when i was 12 and it can't ever change or be anything different <laughs> and we're so weird about that yeah you know and it's weird because it's not an innately progressive state of mind fandom no. so the fact that we are you know trying to take our basically adult brains which are about equity and progressivism and fairness and tie those to our child brains, which are about the cool thing I loved when I saw it the first time. You know, that's part of growth. And it's interesting that you, you know, you talked about the 28 days of black cosplay, you know, because um, this is something I want to plug, Tara. This is why I'm, I'm hijacking you is I forgot we do the Dwayne McDuffie awards oh. for diversity in comics. And we're going to be doing it virtually this year, but the it's and it's named after um, my my friend Dwayne McDuffie, who was who co-created um, the S Static Shock animated series and the Milestone comics, and was just you know an amazing you know um, guy who broke walls wherever he went, but died very young, and they do an award for comic book artists and writers who either represent diversity or you know champion it and the motto on the award is from invisibility to inevitability Ooh, mm. oh i love, love that. that i love that mm. and you know um phil <clears throat> the other thing about Dwayne was like so talented the nicest guy like right, you worked with him on um... so sweet such like mm -hmm. only goodness just goodness yeah. flowed from him yeah. so i'm happy you spoke about that and we'll add the link to um this this post as well thank you for oh, bringing cool. that up i love that so much um and look i think things are changing slowly and when they do it's so great and it's so awesome and of course it should be celebrated so thank you buns for bringing that up super important my pleasure um joe where can people find you what do you want to promote yeah so um, where you guys can find me online is uh, my official website, CarmillaJoe.com. Uh, Instagram is Circus of Miss Joe, and my TikTok is Carmilla Joe. And one thing I want to promote is that with the Lunar New Year coming up, um, there is this fundraiser organization called Save Our Chinatowns. Because, um, you know, with this pandemic, um, a lot of Asian communities, especially Chinatowns across the nation, are certainly struggling, um, both with discrimination and also with um, surviving and with gentrification. And so um, I'll share this in my Instagram story as well, but Save Our Chinatowns is having a fun 
Lunar New Year fundraiser to raise funds for um, Chinatown businesses in Oakland based here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I love uh, that. Check that out. I love that. We will add that link too. Yeah. Thank you. For Thank that. you. Oh, I'll, e I'll email that link too. So you guys have it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good Thank you. Time. I love that. I love that. Jess. <laughs> Where can everybody find you? Well, um, you can find me uh, on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. It's all under Jaywood Designs. It's all one word. Um, I'll be working on some cosplays, hopefully soon on stream. Just haven't had much motivation to stream, but we're going to be trying to work on some uh, Chinese New Year cosplays. Uh, as for promoting a charity, I don't really have a charity per se, but I just want to encourage everyone to go and find our local black owned businesses and support them during this time and just support their business. Thank you. Appreciate you. you. Can't believe you all just showed up today looking all fabulous. You're awesome. Delta. Hey, so you all can find me on Instagram and TikTok as Delta underscore major and on Twitter, uh, Delta underscore major Lee. So just add a L-Y to the end. Uh, I will be making a bunch more mash dress soon to come. As Bun said, of course, 28 days of black cosplay, but it should really be 365 because <laughs> 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 representation matters. We need yeah. to share all, all shades and ethnicities and backgrounds of cosplay, especially highlighting our POC cosplayers and BIPOC cosplayers during this month. And yeah, just look out for my future clothing line of Delta Major Designs. You can see it. It'll be launched soon at deltamajordesigns.com. And until then, just look for my mash dress and support all your cosplay friends of color. And yeah, I'm here for it. I You're love off. that. Thank you. And thank you guys all so much for coming today. It was very special, very meaningful, very fun. Greg, do you have anything you want to say to anybody that's going to be intelligent at all? Are there a, is there a live chat going on right now? Is there a live chat going on right now? Yes! Read some comments from the live chat. Okay. Do you guys want to hang out for five minutes to take some fan questions? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's check it out. How about the live chat right now? Oh, and I think if there's, if there's a super chat option, I think you can super chat and be brought up to the top so we can get right to it. And anything that's made from the Super Chat will go to Mercy for Animals today. Okay, if you can add that later. I don't think it's on there now, but yes. Or we, no, could, no, do we, one of, or we could do one of the charities mentioned today. They were pretty special. Pretty special. Whatever you want. Whatever charity you want. But people okay, can do okay. that by doing okay. the Super Chat. Demarius wants to know, Phil, would you cosplay as Samurai Jack? As soon as I can grow my hair that long. <laughs> <laughs> Wigs. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do, a, do a dreadlock version. I think Ooh, it'd be that'd, be, Ooh, that'd be awesome. Hot. That'd be kind of hot. Okay. There's actually static like jack. Static jack. Actually, yes. <laughs> there's actually a lot of cool designs that you can change. Uh, different things. It'd be really cool. Okay. Um. And Leonard wants to know, Phil, what was your favorite episode ever of Samurai Jack? Ooh. Um. I, well, that's weird because there's there's a lot of them that I absolutely love. Um, I think the episode where he gets his sword back in season five, just because the, the backgrounds that they painted for that journey that he goes on in his mind, I want all of them framed and in my house. Um, plus it's, you know, just such a turning point in, in his life and his mission. Um, but then again, I also like the Jump Good episode from season one. So, I don't know. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, fan Greg, fan question. I can't read this name, but DJ, DJ G-E-K-I wants to know, have you ever painted yourself in a corner with a voice that just wrecked you after every session? Baldwin. You know, it was for a video game, really. It's always on video games. Always because, a video you know, game. You have, you have to scream over and over again. I think it was a video game where I had to do death by fire by being burned alive. And, you know, you do a couple of takes of that and yeah, that'll, uh, that'll, that'll mess with your voice, you know. Uh, 
Do it again, do it again five more times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's always like the next day you have to sing at something and you like blow exactly, your vocal right. cords doing a bunch of death sounds. Um, okay, they all say thank you for giving us awesome childhoods. Um, tips on getting into voiceover. We get that. It asked us a lot. Greg, Phil, you want to take a little? Learn to act. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Because a lot of people think it's just like, here, I do, a, I do an impression of Scooby-Doo. It's like, well, they already got somebody who does that. Who are you? <laughs> the only way you can create original characters is by learning how to perform characters, by acting. You know, the acting is right. first, the voice comes second. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and uh, all Let of me us... add some... Let me... What? I was going to add, act to learn. You have to do it, you know? It's, you're not going to be great at the beginning, but you have to be acting and acting to learn. You got to just do it and try it and improv and try things and go into the places you're afraid of. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think classes are really important. Um, we've all been trained and there are definite moments where we tap into things that we learned and, and things that can help us through different things. Actually, um, Baldwin, someone wants to know if you have any process for getting into a coup or if you just jump in the booth and go. You know what? I always just, I hear that voice from Pacific Overtures in my head and I can always find it. And, it and it's interesting because there are two Makos in that show when it begins the show it's very very big Nippon the floating kingdom and at the end of the show which is very sad he reprises the line Nippon the floating kingdom and so I actually can find both Iroh and Aku from that single line from Pacific Overtures Nice. Just Amazing. from from years and years of, of doing it, you know. Uh, Amazing. Um, Phil, Sky Knight seventy three wants to know where you got that dope shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Red Bubble, maybe. I'm not. I don't remember exactly. Okay. Found it online. Nice. Found it online. All right. Okay. I think I think we're good. I think we're good, guys. This has been a real treat. I'm super grateful that you all came to join us today. Um, will you guys come back another day? And especially to you cosplayers, I've seen you guys do other things. Will you join us another day? Of I course. Sure, sure, yeah. I'd be honored. Tara, yeah. I got, I'll make you a mask dress, certainly, what, with one of your I, characters. Delta, this is what I want. I want, like, all my characters on one Met, ba Met Gala gown. Oh, no. Done. All of them? Done. All that of them. Happens. There's that would not be amazing. a space. Wait. There's not a free That's space. I got space. Heard you. Got a free space. You're gonna, need a, you're gonna need a big closet to keep that one in. We're gonna yeah, dance absolutely. everybody out of here. Everybody dance out of here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this Jashi episode. Samurai Jack, I love you, Phil. Love you, Greg. I love you, my new cosplayer friends. Thank you for showing love up. You too. So Thank, you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving us awesome childhoods. Oh, yes. yes. Thank, you. Thank you for inviting you. us. Yes. Yes. Such a pleasure. Subscribe, 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 like, 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 share, share, share. You know how we do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.